the Conquering Mouse Scrap or with Brenda. I'm Brenda and we're here today with block one of the Psychedelic Snowflake Quilt. And that's the quilt behind me right here. Um, this, this is going to be such a fun thing. I have lots of great tips. But first, let's do our shout out. I found this morning, we're filming this on Halloween, October 31st, and I found her this morning. Now I don't have a first name, but she is doing some amazing stuff. And it's called Cathedral Quilt Cathedral Window Quilt Lab. Now her YouTube channel has got all these beautiful quilts that she has done using the method of the cathedral window. But you gotta go check her out because wow, when I saw some of the videos that she had and some of the patterns she got, my jaw dropped. So she does not know this is coming, of course. You know, it's not, you know, it, it uh, I was just so impressed with her. So when you go check her out, tell her that Brenda from Conquering Mount Scrapmore sent you over there and it'll be a lovely surprise for her because it looks like she's just starting, like within the first couple of months. So yeah, she probably does some really cool things. Now she also does, she teaches lessons and she sells patterns. So I mean, it is, but her stuff is just beautiful. It's like, wow. Now, the other thing you're gonna find our show notes is our Facebook group, which is growing rapidly. It's a really fun community of, you know, fabric swaps and, you know, sharing ideas and sharing pictures, asking for help and get, you know, all sorts of wonderful ideas. Lots of really very talented quilters are in there. It is amazing. It's a great community to be part of. I am so proud that I've met so many people out of that community that it's just, it's been wonderful. It is just a, such a blessing for me. Oh, and the other thing that's in there is our Zoom so dates. Now, it's going to be from now until the end of December, and then we'll start posting like the January to next year, the end of next year, right? So as we get closer to December, you know, th then those those dates will start appearing and then you can mark them on your calendar, right? So you can come join us on a Zoom so date. We're going to continue that. We're having a lot of fun with that. Now also what you're going to find in there is the PDF for the block one of the Psychedelic Snowflake. This is block one right here. I've got the little white paper on top of it, most of it, so you can't really see it all that well, but I needed to mark for me. So now you're going to take this and you're going to print six triangles, right? Six triangles make up a hexi. Now these are six inch hexes behind me here. This is a six inch hexi, right? Now I've only told you if you wanted to print a 200, you're going to get a 12 and a half inch or 12 inch hexi, but you can also print at 150 and get a nine and a half inch hexi. So whichever one you decide, the, the 200, I warn you now, takes up nine pieces of paper of computer paper the 150 takes up four. So it's up to you how much paper, but you still need six. Now, the other thing that comes out, out of this, this quilt took 24 and it's only crib size. So times four is 96, right? And that's gonna give you a queen size. So out of these, there's only six snowflakes and then um, uh, the cornerstones, which you already got, and then a piece border, so it's up to you how big you want to make this, right? I would suggest with this, you start with one. If you don't like the process, you're not committed to hundreds, or it will seem like hundreds of hours of paper piecing. So, but this is one that we have, and it's in our show notes. So you go check those out. Now, come on in. I've got lots of tips. It's not going to be hard. It'll be fun. So come on in. Let's get to the sewing. Okay, here we are at the sewing table. Now, of course, this this uh, tracing wheel has been a godsend. So I've already got my tracing wheel already marked up and scored around where I have to sew, right? Or like where my lines are on the, on the paper. And I've got all my pieces cut already, pre-cut to speed this up a little bit because there is a few little bumps, but not there's nothing you can't handle, right? So, but this is an important tool. And I do it now with all of my paper piecing. Um, having your pieces pre-cut, that work just speeds up the work. That's all there's to it. Now, when I do this on a quilt, what I'll do is I'll have all of this piece six, you know, all six of them lined up and ready to go, right? Now, um, this is the outside edge, so we won't need that until later. Now, these crayons. You can use wax crayons, you can use pencil crayons, you can use, you can just write in the color if you want. You can, I use uh, moat pens, 
These are a pan set that I got from Ikea. And uh, it's you find it in the kids section. And it covers a pretty, it's a nice variety of colors. And it also includes like the teal colors in that too that you might want to throw into your quilt. So this one I thought was, you know, not, and it was cheap. This one was cheap. And I mean, my grandkids will play with these when they're done, right? So, but I mean, these are what I have around in my sewing room. But you can also use crayons, paper, you know, whatever. Like, go to a school or a office supply store and pick your paper, your, uh, your crayons, I guess, whatever. Now, there is a correction before we go any further. On the top of this triangle right here, this line here is left blank. And it should be called six black and that's a long narrow strip of black that we're going to put on there and for some reason it doesn't come on out on the pdf so make sure that when you're printing these you just mark in six black that's the number of which number it's sewn in there's only six pieces on here and that's the last one and it's black now the units i've only suggested print a 200 for a 12 inch hexi you can print at 150 as well and it'll give you a nine and a half inch hexi. This must equal one inch, right, on your print. If not, go back to your printer and make sure it's only printing at 100%. If you're printing at 150, this is going to measure one and a half inches. And if you're printing at 200, this little one inch test, <clears throat> excuse me, will print at two inches square. So, you just have to remember if you're printing from other than like, you know, 150 or 200, you have to correct the seam allowance around here, right? That's all. That, and I'll show you how to do that, okay? So, the other thing now about this, this is like your pinks are here and you want the colors to lay out symmetrically, right? So the oranges are here, the purples are here. There's only one teal and one, or one, one green and one teal. The reds are here, the yellows are here, and the blues are here, right? You want the colors to remain symmetrical on your block in order to get that snowflake effect. And what I have done is I've lit, cut them all out and laid them all out this way, you know, and then, okay, this I'm going to make one color, and this is my oddball color, and this is my oddball. So I picked a color doesn't matter if it's red blue green whatever the next two are orange so from unit b1 and unit a7 they have to be the same color from unit b3 b3 and unit a5 it has to be the same color and then from unit a1 and unit c6 it has to be the same color and unit C3 and unit A3 has to be the same color and unit B7 and unit C6 or 5 sorry has to be the same color. Now I'm just going to hold this here and you guys can see how I've marked it up. The yellow doesn't show up very well on camera and I'm hoping you'll be able to see this, but you lay out your color, whatever color you choose, you lay them out so that they will come together symmetrically, right? Because that's what's going to give you that really dynamic snowflake effect, right? So uh, we'll just hold it for a sec and then we'll start, <laughs> okay? And don't be, don't be afraid of this. Because if you put the, you know, if you put it in the wrong place, I mean, it would still look pretty good, right? Now, when I have picked my colors, I pulled from, except for the orange, the orange that I'm using, this orange here, I've pulled all from my, my crumb blocks, my crumb box, right? So I had enough in my crumbs to do this, but I have lots and lots of crumbs and I have them all sorted by color, right? So, I mean, this is something you might want to consider too. Now, let's, so I'm hoping you're done with this. So now we've cut out, we've cut them out. We've cut them out and we're, I've pinned, I've got all the pieces already pre-cut, ready to go. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with the biggest piece first. And the only trouble spot you're going to have on the big piece here is this little area here where you've got the two pinks and then the two blacks, but that's not hard because you just, you go 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, right? I mean, 
and this is all flipped over like this. So the first ones you're going to sew on here are going to be your black and your blue. Now, I'm going to flip this over because I laid out my blue like so and I was just peeking over the edge and I laid my black right on top of it. Okay. And then I ran it under the foot. Okay, so now we've got our first piece through and the next piece is gonna go through. You didn't, see, you didn't even have to, you didn't have to pin nothing, right? Like I would do all six of them and then I would do the next bit. So this orange, on this bit, we're gonna have orange and black. So I'm just gonna lay my black up there and I want it to stick out. Wow, I'm shaking bad today. I want it to stick out just a hair on both sides. There we go. I'll lay it down like so. I'll lay it like so. There we go. If I make a mistake, I will stop. I will pick it apart and I'll show you how to fix it. So now you're going to be sewing between one and two. And I would do all six of these. Right? When I'm making a quilt. And I would just sew right off the edge. Right? It doesn't matter. So now this, again, is a blue... They, I have it marked where yellow is the center, but it doesn't doesn't matter really where you put that. Now I'm gonna line up the blue and the black just like that, so the black and the blue are just hanging over the edge because I kept them pretty close to the seam allowance, and I want to sew in between the blue and the black one. Okay, so. Now, I'm finger pressing. What I would do if I was doing this is I would, I would take it to the ironing board and of course I'm going to press and I'm going to make it all nice and it's going to look wonderful. But, you know, you guys know how to press, right? <laughs> you know how to press your quilters. You know how to press fabric. You just drop it down and you, where is this here? You drop it down and you put it in your, your your piece. Okay, so there's one. There's another one. I'm just going to finger press. You know how to press. You pre put your iron down flat. You hold it and you pull it away. You put a clapper down. This thing is absolutely flat. So now the next piece you're going to be doing is between the two and the black and the purple, right? So on this is your next color goes in, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay this here like so and put this down like so because wow that's a really oversized piece of yellow but that'll work. It'll work. It's coming out of my crumbs. So yeah this length has happened around here. We blinked and summer was over and we blinked again and it's Halloween. Right. I mean, I couldn't believe it. I was just like, oh, it's Halloween. I've got to need a drop for tomorrow. So we're a little running a little panic in the house today. And then it's, it's okay. It'll be fine. Okay, so the next yellow goes in. And yes, it's oversized, but it's a crumb. It's fine that it's oversized. Nobody, you don't have to judge. You know, it's crumbs. It's stuff that would it have ended up in anything, you know, Anything else? Probably not. So don't worry about it. We can put crumbs in. It, it's fine. So now you look at, so now you're looking at when you've wrote all the colors in there or you've colored them in, okay, what's the next color? Then you just pull this open and away you go, right? So I have a bunch of this stuff, kind of like half curved things as well in my crumb bin crumb bin so I thought oh well, I'll use these for sure for sure for sure I will use these so then you just sew between the black and the purple <laughs> there we go there there we go and now I'm going to trim between the yellow and the black right so I just kind of think of where 
what your neck if you're sewing on a color your next one's going to be a black and that's where you're sewing right so that's you got to trim before you sew because the the thing for this is this is big enough i'm going to keep um trim yeah trim so press trim so press right so this now goes on next this black and just line it up you know no reason to get crazy or worried or anything like that. It's, you know, it's all going to be fine. There we go. Okay. Do another yellow. Yeah, these are just... As I was doing this, I, I made a sample one where I have all six ready to go. And I figured, okay, I'll just make an oddball one here. I, uh... I figured, okay, this is not something we panic about. And get a little short black piece here, just like so. Just make sure it covers. Yes, it does. Right here. And now you're sewing between the yellow and the black, the color and the black, right? I don't have a leader ender. Okay, so the last color piece was purple or black that was sewn on, sorry. And you trim this. And the next piece is purple. It's right here. So it goes on. Yeah, I was kind of glad to see some of this go. These odd shapes just are, they take up room in my, my crumb bin. And because they're not rectangular, I tend to not use them. So that's a bad thing. Well, get there we go. And like I say, if it works best for you that you sew all one shape first and then sew the next shape, that's whatever's working for you, that's the that's the one you should use, you know. Like I'm just because I can do you know this doesn't mean <laughs> that everybody else can't, you know, so it's kind of it's one of those things, and you're just lining it up. There we go, just like that, just on the edge of where you trimmed. And okay, now you're sewing between the purple and the black. This is what I like about the coloring. There, I'm coloring your pieces, right? There we go. <sighs> okay, now the black. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> yeah, these are these are fun. I enjoyed doing this the other day. I was getting all of this ready to go to show you guys how to do it. I got mine done that I'm going to be using. I'll just get this one this one out, this little one out, out of the way. The last color here is going to be a uh, black, or red, I'm sorry, red. <laughs> and if you're not sure, once you've laid them all out, you know, you're not sure, you can always check, oh, okay, I need a red, so that's what I'm gonna pick. I'm gonna pick a red to be here. Okay. <laughs> And make sure your pieces are a little bit oversized. That is important because you wouldn't believe how many times we go off to make this issue. And we have issues because it's a little short. In a quilt as busy as this is going to be, you could get away with poverty piecing and just, you know, putting similar tones together if you had to, you know, just to fill in the orange. Let's say you were short, you weren't, didn't quite have enough orange, you could poverty piece it and get away with it. Because there's so much going on, people aren't going to see it. Right? Okay. Oh, I'll just move that out of the way. Now this trims this way. 
right? So you want to put black C, and that's the piece that's missing. Remember, that's we wanted you to write in black number six C because it's missing on the pattern. It's a free pattern, guys. <laughs> so now you just fold it over like so, and out of your pile. Yeah, I know. I don't know why I forgot it. I mean, it's, it's kind of one of those things, well, you can't forget it because otherwise your block looks really funny. And I didn't want to confuse you, so I thought, okay, well, we'll get, make sure you guys know that there's an extra little piece that has got to go on the side. Okay. There we go. And now we're just going to fold all that back. Now, if it looks too banged up, which is starting to get banged up, tape is your friend. This is starting to get banged up. I don't know if I'm going to have a true line to follow. So I'm just going to tape the pieces in place because it's starting to look a little rough and banged up. So get that out of the way and put this down just like so. You just want that black. I would not suggest that you um, put all your uh, black into strips. Uh, there are long, narrow pieces, especially if you do the, the oversized scale, the bigger scales, that having a long, narrow, skinny strip is just going to flip on you, right? And you're going to be cursing, right? So I would work with bigger pieces and then trim down to the right size until, you know, you can no longer use that piece, right? So instead of having it like an inch and a half and so and so long, you know, like this, instead of having an inch and a half by uh, five and a half, right, let's say, you would have it five and a half, but you would also have it like 10 inches long, right? So you're not wasting all that stuff that we're trimming off. Okay, let me just finish this. Okay. Get another piece on here and it's black. Okay, there we go. And there. Yeah. Okay. Now at this point, I would give it a good press before I do any trimming, but we'll we'll show you how to. Get all that done in a bit and get the rest of them done. We'll trim them all at once. I'm always surprised how when you're doing foundation paper piecing like this, it doesn't look like anything until it's trimmed. And it does, it looks, it looks silly, really. Oh, this is way too big. We'll cut a piece off just like so. And we'll put this up like so. There we go. <laughs> yeah. And, okay. Yeah, see, this doesn't look like it's going to fit on anything, right? <laughs> but it does. But it does. We're getting to the point where we've got the hard bit coming up here in a bit. Okay, so I want this to go like this. Wait a minute. I'm, okay. I want it to go like that, so there's got to be sewn like this. I want to go out past that edge just a hair. There. Now that's going to fit. You have to, if you're not sure about how it's going to be sewn, flip it over. And make sure you have half an inch over, right? That, that'll, that's a good gauge, right? Like if you're not sure if it's something's going to fit properly, you know, that's a good way of telling how, how it's going to go. Okay. Okay, let's get the green in here. All right. So this is black and then red. Okay, black. And you just kind of center it, you know. Just it, you're going to be trimming and trimming and trimming. So don't don't get too crazy about 
And there's some people when they do foundation paper piecing, they don't even use um, add a quarter ruler, this ruler. They don't. They just use a regular ruler. And guys, it works perfect. Now, now we're at the hard bit, right? This little peak here. And what I do is I trim for between 10 and uh, like 10 and 9 and 9 and 11, right? So I get the right shape of for the green, right? That's all I'm looking for right now is the right shape. So I'm going to do two trimmings and you're going to put two blacks on, right? And I'm going to trim this up and it looks like something a little bit better than it is. Okay, so I'm going to lay all that back and I'm going to tape it because it's starting to look a little ratty. It always looks a little ratty. Okay, there. So I'm going to now fold it and trim between 9 and 11 so I get the right shape because 9 has to be kind of a diamondy shape. Okay, so the first one we're going to sew on is 10 and it's up here. So we're just going to get 10 and I'm going to be generously laying it over on both. Okay, now. There we go. And I only want to go a quarter inch past and then pull it forward. Okay, I'll get this out of the way. I think the only thing I've got left now is the red in the last black. Okay. Okay, I'm going to just run this through. This is the last color piece for this, so that's quick. It's just a little piece. Okay. Now, so that's 10. And what you want to do is you want to press it down really good. And I don't cut between 10 and 12 yet, and not until I get 11 on. Right? Okay, so 11 goes like this, and you lay it along the green edge, right? Because you want to make that shape, and you want to pick this up, pick your foot up, and only start like about a quarter inch away from where it has to be sewn between the 11 and 9. Okay? I know, it sounds weird. <laughs> Yeah, because normally it's like, oh no, it's all. I know, I know. We're just about there, people. We're in the home stretch. <laughs> okay. So now I have pushed this up and folded this up. And as soon as I start pulling, like you, when you're doing your foundation paper piecing, you get the best results if you shorten your stitch length, which creates a bit of a problem because between the tracing wheel and the needle, Right? Oh, I'm going to get that part too, I suppose. Between the tracing wheel and the needle, this is pretty well perforated. So if you look at it funny, it falls apart on you. So this is where we try to just, you know, pull it apart the best you can. And if there's a little bit that rips, okay, well, you tried. You tried your best. Okay. And I'm just going to move this over just a hair. Okay, there we go. Now, I'm going to put the black down. Now this is, on this piece, on the, this scale, this is the longest black. Now you want to have coverage from this white tip to this white tip, right? Because you don't want your, your piece to be too short because the piece is going out, right? Okay. I wonder if it's going to flip on me. Or sometimes it wobbles on a long piece like that, a long skinny piece like that. So that's why if it if it has wobbles, it'll stop. And it'll... Okay, I'm just going to trim this, just like so. I'm not even going to get my quarter inch ruler out of the way. I'm not going to do any of that. I'm just going to... That's it. We're good. And now you see that shape for the top. Now... I'm going to trim for 12 and 13 at the same time. Well, not at the same time, but now while I'm here. So I'm going to do 12 first. 
And I get rid of all that excess bulk there. And now I'm going to trim for 13. Well, no, I can sew, to, I'll sew 12 first. Now 12, now this is a crazy batik. It's got, you know, every color under the sun. So I'm going to do this first. And I'm going to make sure I've got good coverage. Yes, I do. Okay. Okay. This corner and chin. And then get this out. I think this one is done. I don't have any more. So, no, it didn't. It laid absolutely perfectly flat. How come I'm the only person that wants to make a mistake to show you how to fix things? I must be the only person on Facebook, on YouTube that's doing that. Let's capture that your mistake on YouTube. Okay. So now we're going to do the last piece, which is 13 and 11. And that's just straight across. Pull this back. Pull up any loose threads that you got. Okay. Last piece gets sewn on. And the reason, okay, you, you look at batiks, because this is a batik, this, the color, the stronger color or the stronger pattern is the right side. And if you can't tell, don't worry about it. Just put it in the quilt. It'll be fine. And, okay. Oops, just a minute here. I'll get this last piece sewn on and then I'll show you what I've got. And then we'll get to the trimming. Okay, so there it is. All your pieces now are sewn on. So let's get to the trimming. Okay, so here we are. So we're going to be tr just showing you how to trim these pieces. Now I trim the piece. I'm just going to get off the hinge here on the table. Now I take this piece and I put my quarter inch right on the line. Like normally I'm standing above the piece, right? But this trim is out perfect. And then I end up with a perfect trim. <laughs> there. And again, you just lie the quarter inch. Like I've got my Olaf ruler on and I just love this because it's got such fine little markings. And for some reason, there's just a little bit of extra. Hang on. Get this. Just a little bit extra here. There we go. And last piece. And then I'll show you how we're sewed together. Okay. And this is where all the magic comes. Once you get this trimmed, it looks like something, right? Let me just get all these tools out of the way here so that you can see what I'm doing. Okay. So all the pieces are now tool trimmed. And I've watched my, made sure I've got a good quarter, you know, a good quarter inch, right? So this is what, or this is what it's going to look like, right? The pattern when it's done. And I'll just give you a, a second or two to look at that. Okay. So the first one we're going to do is these two, right? Because this is a really nice flat unit that comes up with a flat unit, uh, up against a flat unit. And all we're going to do, uh, I can't see, is we're going to watch that we have little equal things on either side, or what you can do is pin directly in that corner and go to the next corner. Oops, let me show where it is. Okay, here we go. And that's, so you've got one right at the tip and run right at the tip and then you spin it so that you've got matching corners on this side as well. Yeah. Now, yeah. ouch, <laughs> I just stabbed myself with a pin. Now I have done this without, oops, I'm a little off. So I'm gonna change where I'm putting it. Now, while your pins, or perpendicular, like not wobbled like this, or you know, like straight up and down at a 90 degree, right? What you're going to do is you're going to take two other pins and you're just going to pin it so that it stays at the right spot. And just check, yes, nothing moved, nothing shifted, nothing's gone awry. There we go, and we're going to pin again. 
just straight through and loop under. Now, you're not going to use, you're going to use the quarter inch line and you're going to pull these pins, these end pins out. And we're just going to, now with this, this is called needle match, where you go straight in from where the two pieces intersect and you come out, oops, I just went right over the needle a little too fast. Oh well, there we go. Nothing broke, nothing bent, we're good. That would have been bad. And it'll creep up to that needle and make sure everything's still in line. Pull your needle out and everything's perfect. And you're gonna come right out where that notch meets. And here I'll show you what I'm talking about. Okay, just like that. So where this notch is, right? Where the, the two, you know, you can see the little black tip there. You can see where I go in and I come out. And that's called needle matching. So now when I press this open, I'm going to press to the dark. This is that long dark strip. And what I do before I do my stay stitching is I pull out all that extra and then I give it a good press. I use my clapper to make sure it lies nice and flat, everything, right? But we don't have a, a sewing machine here or an iron, iron here. So now the next one I'm going to do, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to put my pin in right here, drop it in right at the, the tip, and I'm going to aim for the tip here. Ooh, first time. Ooh, nice. Okay, I'm going to do the other side. And we go straight in, right? And then we aim for the other side. And the other side just popped out. Okay, so let's go back. Let's push that in a little bit because it just came out this side. Hang on. There we go. Right back in. Okay, so you look at it this way and the pins are lying, you know, pretty much, you know, up and straight up and down. And you drop it in, pin it back, pull that first pin. There we go. Oh, oops. It's not gonna lie flat because I pulled both pins. Now you needle match in on where that they meet. And right up to the pin, nice and slow. Make sure everything's still wind up good. And go right across. Now. Okay. So that, so now you just fold to the black, right? And you take all of that out. And there is your there's your star. You trim off these dog ears. And when I do my stay stitching, I'm going to make sure that they fold this way, right? So that they, you know, everything that lies, it's going to lie flatter doing it this way because you have all of these seams on this piece that need somewhere to go, right? Even though this is only a quarter inch and there's lots, if you tried to go the other way, it would create too much bulk, right? So you want the piece to lie as flat as it does. And it does lie flat if you iron and use your clapper. So let's look at the samples I've made, right? And yes, I changed the yellow and I, yeah, I think it was only the yellow that I changed. Okay, so let's lay these out. There are three different ways you can lay this out. Now you can lay them out in a star like this, which is very, you know, all the pink towards the center and it looks adorable, right? I mean, this is what they look like once they're stay stitched. You know, you just go around within the seam allowance and you stay stitch them. So that looks pretty cool, right? I think. Or we can take this and go like this. Just give it half, like a half spin. And you make this ra rather, you know, cool little display. It looks like a kaleidoscope. And these kind of look like little you know, cat faces with the ears and the, you know, the long face. It, it, it is a little different, a little, a little cool, but I liked it. I really do. The other thing you could do is this. And I, for some reason, just love this with all these seams going that way. 
you have a big triangle in the center, but you have all this other, you know, all this other stuff is going on there. And it's because you've laid out the block symmetrically with color. And you have like these little florets on the, on the three sides and points. Yeah, it's just, it's a really cool way of doing it. So now you choose which way you want to do this. Okay, let's get to the big ta-da moment now. Okay, so here's the big ta-da moment, right? I, I have not sewn this together. And quite honestly, I don't sew this all together because I'm still flipping around and seeing which design I like best. So out of one pattern, you get three different, very different looking snowflakes, right? And this piece here that says, you know, to sew on the outer edge, once I make my decision on which way I'm going, then I sew in my, my outer edge. So I want, you know, a couple of these in there and I want, you know, like variations of this and that. So I would have a lot of eclectic mix. When I asked my daughter about this one, she wanted definite star points in the center. And I kind of went with it, but I was sitting there, oh, this would be so much more fun if we did all variety of stuff. So it was kind of like, okay, let's try this instead. Now, like I say, I only sew on this when I've, I've laid them all out. So I will keep these together and I will cut my outer edges, but I don't sew them together until we're done. Now, you're only, if you do decide which way you want this, you only sew three together and then you sew another three together, but you don't do this center seam because you sew this in rows, just like this. You don't, so there's no Y seams. So you're not sitting there trying to struggle and get your Y seam. Now, do you want to see what I did? <laughs> I decided to go big and bold and just have some fun with this. So this is my triangle and I am, it's going to be huge because it's a 12 and a half inch hexi. And it's just going to be really big and bold and everything else. Now, I'm going to show you something. These two blues, you see the blues? They're not the same blue. But in the quilt, there's, they're all placed. The dark blue is on one side and the lighter blue is on the other. But when you put this in a quilt, you're not going to see it, right? Because it's all symmetrical. Right? Like the dark blue ends up every six. There's only one dark blue per circle, right? Now, again, we can play with this and start having some serious fun. And it will look really cool, like when it's all done, right? So you have this variety here. I you know you can't even see it. It's so big. <laughs> it's so big it needed its own postal code. So <laughs> this is one of those that you can play around with and keep having fun with it. I do like the one where they are symmetrical to the, oops, you know, to where, where you end up with the little cat face, you know, that kind of, this kind of idea. I mean, that to me looks just beautiful, but you know, it's up to you what you want. It's your quilt. It's your sewing room. You're in charge, right? So you can make all these decisions on your own. All I've done is giving you a jumping off point. And like I say, there's going to be lots. If you're doing the smaller version, there's lots of blocks you're going to make. You're going to make 96 blocks in total, and you've only got six different snowflakes, right? So there's a lot of blocks and lots. So you have to do the math to see when you're going to, how many of each you'll need. But you will want some variety in there, so it does give it real eclectic, scrappy look. So I hope you enjoyed this. I had so much fun getting this all ready for you. It has been just a blast. I can hardly wait to finish this. So this is going to be one of these projects I'm going to take with me and uh, work on it as I, I need to. So until we meet again, you know, take care. The next one, uh, Snowflake Block 2 drops December 1st. So you take care until then. Okay, bye. My husband and I would love to thank you for all of the amazing people that we have met along this crazy YouTube adventure that we've been having. Uh, we do free speaking engagements too. So if you're part of a guild and they're looking for, you know, people to talk and, you know, and chat with, you know, in their uh, monthly meetings, 
tell them that I'm doing free ones just to help the guilds out because it's been a tough time for the guilds as well. You know, share, like, and subscribe with your friends. You know, make sure that they're, you know, they, they, they get the word out on us. That's, I mean, that's the best way you can do to help us out. So until we meet again, I want to thank you. Okay, goodbye.